So I, I think uh, one interesting part about the Anglican church and we're, we're, it's not exclusive to the Anglican church, but in our tradition, we will, uh, baptize infants mm-hmm. who, who would not be, who would certainly not be thinking of in the, on the same terms in terms of involvement in the church. Um, but we, we still have the tradition and we, and we still, it's an important part of the, uh, the right. So can you talk a little bit about how that, what you just talked about in terms of membership and involvement kind of squares up with infant baptism? Mm-hmm. We, um, we did an infant baptism some years ago and um, the, the couple were fairly committed to the church and they wanted their, their little boy to be fully immersed in the water. So we filled up the font with warm water and we, we sat the little kid in this and then um, the priest sort of went sort of like that, dropped him into the water, head right down into the water and brought him up and the kid sort of went like that as if to say, what did you do that for? Um, that's not normally what we do. Um we can do that, but um, normally, normally the water is just sprinkled on the child, um, who may well start screaming blue murder, or they may just wonder what's going on, sort of look around, slightly dazed. Mm-hmm. The what you actually have at an infant baptism, you have the parents and you have godparents, and they are integral to what's going on because they are taking on the commitment and the promises on behalf of the child. Right. Who may who may be five or six years old, not necessarily just an infant. Um, so what you're doing is you're introducing um, a group of support people around that child, mm-hmm. who are then going to and they promise to bring that child up in the Christian faith to teach, to to nurture, to protect, um, and to be be the sort of um, support team for that child as they as they develop. And as they begin to understand the the basic Bible stories, first of all, and then more about what, what the Christian life is all about. And then ultimately, um, when the time is right and when when the the child has turned into, a, say, a young teen, a teenager or a young adult and they, they want to, they can then go forward in, in our in our Anglican church for something called confirmation. Right. Where basically they take all of those promises that were that were made by the godparents and the parents and take them to themselves. Mm-hmm. They take those promises upon themselves and they take control of their Christian life going forward with support from other people as well. Yeah. But they're saying, yes, what you did for me when I was three months old, I now take on myself mm-hmm. as a young adult or as or as a, or as a full grown adult. Doesn't matter really. Um, so there's a, there's a two stage process there with it, with, um, with 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 children, but it's the children, the the parents and the godparents are integral to that process. I remember when um, we were before we had our oldest daughter baptized, we kind of went through this process, and and you know my wife and I both came from uh, the, the, a free church background, uh, Baptist, not a not non denominational sort of style of worship, and and. You know, I, I said the prayer, you know, to be saved when I was five or six years old and then was baptized when I was 14 or 15, I think. And, um, as we were going through the process of learning about infant baptism and having Lily baptized when she was one or so, um, one of the people walking us through, uh, talked about, uh, there's this guy named uh, D.I. Pat. D.I. Packer, I think his name is J.I. J.I. Packer. I think it's J.I. He was a professor at Regent College for years and years. And he talked about how in the free church model, you essentially have uh, a dry baptism and a wet confirmation is essentially how it goes. Uh, but what 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 we do is we have a, a wet baptism and, and a dry confirmation. And that is the, the essential where it, it reflects what's happening in other models too. You just, you have this time where you kind of take something that's given to you and adopt it as your own. And that happens over years and years, but it is, it is, you know, an essential feature of maybe in the experience of all Christians, especially Christians who grow up in the church and who adopt their faith for their own later on. Tyler, you mentioned when we were doing our Advent series, um, when we were talking about some of the things that um, initially drew us um, to the Anglican tradition, one of them was your 
um, kind of being convinced that infant baptism was one of the things to do. Like you really, you, you really were interested in it. So, um, why was like, what, what was it about that, that practice that piqued your interest or really kind of made you want to commit not only to baptizing, uh, having your oldest baptized, but also like committing to attending, um, an Anglican church. So what, it, what it ended up being for me was, um, as I, cause in, in, in the, in my upbringing, I would regularly see, and as part of a service, we would have, um, child dedication services Mm -hmm. where a newborn baby or recently born baby would be brought up to the front by their parents. They would be held by the pastor. They would be prayed over. They would be, um, the charges would be put on the parents to raise them in certain ways and, uh, and to, uh, help them to grow in their faith and, and to believe in Jesus Christ and all those things. And at some point I watched that and I thought, just do it already. Mm -hmm. Just baptize them. That's what you want to do. It's it's essentially what what you are saying should happen. You just have a certain theological or or pragmatic disposition to 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 only have quote unquote believers baptism. And not that there's anything wrong with believers baptism. I just remember thinking at the time, this is clearly what you want to do, and there's a precedent for it. There's, there was a, there is, and was a tradition set up for it. So I just thought, I think this is what, what everyone wants to do. <laughs> so, so I kind of walked towards that tradition in the Anglican church because it, it does mirror the, the service, the baptism service that we do. That's in the book of alternative services, um, is a very robust version of that same dedication service. It just goes one or two steps beyond it. Mm-hmm. And then when you when you marry that tradition up with the idea of confirmation, um, I think it becomes a very powerful model for witnessing and and assisting children and 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 adult believers as well into what what faith looks like, what practicing your faith and and obeying Jesus Christ and and living uh, uh, the life of a Christian actually actually looks like the service that we use from the um the alternative service book um there is a series of of commitments that are made by the parents and the godparents and then are echoed by the the congregation as a mm-hmm. whole so for, so for the the church overall when when we do a baptism it's quite a good way in which we redeclare our own faith even even if we're not a parent mm-hmm. or a godparent yeah. it, there's a sort of roundness and a sort of collectiveness about that service where we we all make commitments and remind ourselves of the commitments that we've made it's um it's a very nice mm-hmm. nice is not a very strong word it's a very appropriate mm-hmm. type of service that we do well, and I think even in that service, the congregation as a whole is charged mm. with um, witnessing and holding people accountable to the promises that parents and godparents are making and to hold themselves to be accountable for the child themselves, which I think is a, a powerful model for thinking about how communities and parents raise children. I think it's a commentary on um, society in a, in a general way of of the difference of opinion in the in the Anglican tradition and other traditions about who actually raises children, um, whether it's just parents or is it whether it's bigger than that. And I I think it's bigger than that. And I like how um, the service kind of brings everyone's attention to the fact that. This is bigger than just what parents do, because if it was just parents, then there'd be more likelihood for failure because being a parent's hard <laughs> and you, you need help <laughs> as, as we all know. I think it's the role of the, one of the roles of the church that I think is, is understated sometimes is the role the church should have in supporting young families. Mm-hmm. That's something I want to see us develop in our church is, mm-hmm. is, is more effective support for the young families because we're incredibly lucky that we have so many in our church. Um, yeah. they, um, and also I think one of the things about the baptism is that it shows the value that we're giving to children. 
they're not they're not just in the way. There was a very famous report written about about the way that the church deals with children some years ago called Children in the Way. And are they in the way in the in the in the, in the, church, in the Christian way, or are they just in the way? Get out of the way. Yeah. And really, it's so important for us to value the fact that we have these all these kids swarming all over the church on a, after coffee, eating all the cake. But heck. They're there. That's so important. They're there. And they're an important, well, I'm, I'm always very biased. You know, Trevor and I will be very biased in this, in this opinion because we're, we're the parents with young children. Um, but I, I think that church is not just for the old and it's not just for the young. Everyone benefits by having uh, slices of different demographics, all kind of weaving and mingling around in the life of the church, whether that means you have some screams during the Eucharist, occasionally that happens, or a nice, nice, nice quiet time at other times. Um, it all is a net, it's a benefit to everyone, um, subject to some extremes. Well, it seems like more and more churches uh, these days, children are, for lack of a better word, removed from the service before you even start. Like, you you arrive, you check in your child with the child care or Sunday school, and then you pick them up after. And that's f- Sunday school is a, a good thing for them to do. But um, something that I, since we have had kids, I something I appreciate about what we do here is we have our, our children's message, and that might be you doing it, Dick. That could be like Belinda mm-hmm. uh, last week or, or the priest. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have, you know, depending on the Sunday, we have godly play afterwards, but we come back to participate in that service um, at, at, the, at the Eucharist. So I still like that even though we have this, this separate time for children to go learn, um, they do get to come back and participate. And it's not just a, a drop off mm-hmm. for an hour and then the parents get to sit and, and listen and then we pick them up at the end. Well, and it's very naive to think that children care about the same things that adults mm-hmm. care about in the, in the play and how a service plays out. Like it would, it would be a disservice to everyone if it was just a free for all, mm-hmm. like, because, because adults of all different stages of life want to hear about different things than children do. Um, and so creating venues for those things to be, uh, to, venues and environments for those things to be talked about in a, a quiet calm way um is great um but it's all about i think the purpose of the separation if it's going to happen and and also recognizing that it doesn't always have to you don't always have to separate everyone there's value to everyone being together even if it's very different well, um, let's be honest. How often have you gone home and thought, I remember what happened in Godly Play today because of this, this, and this, but I forgot what the sermon was about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 